There is a fifth dimension. A dimension of sound. Damn it, Frank! We tell him to be quiet. I spill my hot cup of Uranus again. A dimension of sight. Hey, Arch. I'm gonna sock you in the puss. A dimension of mind. Nan Adams, is that you? Ah! Ah! Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Yes. The oh, love boat is a little place this is where be interesting. it's <laughs> ambiguous. Whoa, whoa, you just mixed two things up. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal, to mix two things up. Um. Okay, so now that we got our, our uh, war stories from Jaws out of the way, um, Passage and of then... Lady Anne. <laughs> Again. <laughs> We revisit this every six months when Raymond comes on. We do war stories just for your pleasure. Okay, so today's episode is the penultimate episode of season four, which is season four, episode 17, called Passage on the Lady Anne, uh, directed by Lamont Johnson. The last actual episode written by Charles Beaumont because he was truly very, very sick and would eventually pass away in the next couple of years. Um, it's based off his story, Song for the Lady, Song for a Lady, um, production code 4869, original air date May 9th, 1963. Stars Lee Phillips, Joyce Van Patten, Wilfred Hyde White, Glass Cooper, Cecil Cal Kellaway, and Alan Napier. So, Raymond, welcome back. I know Hello. it's been it's been a hot minute since you've been on. So, Joyce Van I, I Patten is one of thirteen Twilight Zone actors to be on what show next? Touched by uh, an angel. Yeah. <laughs> and she was probably on Treehouse of Horror too. Probably. Yes. We, we <laughs> have Joyce two. Van I don't know. There's going to be a link to Treehouse of Horror somewhere in here. Yeah, we, we <laughs> have two more Twilight Zone actors that are involved in Twilight Zone. So, one of the talking heads on uh, Probe Seven over and out, and the wife in Stop Over in a Quiet Town. Interesting. She was also in uh, Grown Ups in St. Emma's Fire. She was nice. In the Falcon and the said, Snowman. I think they said the McChesneys or McKesneys. Whatever their names are, Toby and Millie, who is who is weirdly who says that uh, she's sticky at one point. Um, I think both of them were on um, the were were in Fair or My Fair Lady. One is Mrs. Higgins, and the other one I don't. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, lady. Yep. Um. Yeah. So connections all around. Joyce Van Patten's only cast member of this show still alive. He's yeah, also associated with the with the Van Patten family, which is a great MST3K sketch. Back I wouldn't know because I don't watch. Why show. not, Nick? Why not? Because I'm a terrible individual. Because it's uh, only a show. Nick <sighs> is like my dad that watches MST3K and is like, this show would be so much better if they didn't talk over the fucking <laughs> <story>. <laughs> Yeah, this, this show would be so much better if it weren't for the fucking the robots. <laughs> oh, I tried to watch movie. it once and my dad said that he's like why are they talking over the movie I want to watch this then go find the movie and watch it <laughs> sorry no offense oh my god that's like <laughs> if you go to a musical and they're like why are they singing <laughs> <laughs> oh man which is what according to statistics 84% of people said while well, watching the Mean Girls movie so, or whatever yeah so. wait aren't they singing yeah, they. Why are, are they singing? No one knew it was a fucking music. Oh, the new that one. That happens I, a lot. I, I to that. <laughs> oh, just wait till they get a load of Wicked. They're gonna be so surprised when they find out that's a musical. It uh, started as a musical, though. I, I think know, it, yeah. I know. But the, you know how they like they refuse to like put the songs in there and stuff like that because they're afraid like people are gonna be like, I don't want to go see that. That's a musical. Wait till you see Deadpool and Wolverine's a musical. Yeah. Well, look at Wonka yeah, got yeah. said shit because or, it's kind of a musical. What's the the Joker Joker two? It's supposedly going to be a musical. Oh yeah, yeah. The I think South Park movie in. was a musical, and people loved that though. They just well, apparently people the... love Wonka because it made like six hundred million dollars. So Jeez, is Christ. the new Mean Girls movie is the musical bad? It's yes. not great from what I hear. See, okay, I'm, I I'm, watched like twenty minutes of it. I'm like, nope, I'm out. I'm I'm a hater on this one. I'm usually not a hater, but I'm happy. Well, no, just, they're they're like I, they're I like the, they did a musical of that movie. <laughs> They're like the crew on the on the lady and the old people. They're like to the young people. They're like, nope, I'm out. And they just yeah. throw them all into a lifeboat. The bow tie wearing bastards, <laughs> right? right. Okay, like is this the most British everything. episode ever known to mankind? Um, I mean, it's very sticky. 
Yeah. <laughs> At one point, someone <laughs> says, "Keep a stiff up, keep a stiff upper lip." If that's not the British, like the most British thing ever, I don't know what is. I mean, you sound like you're from London. <laughs> London. Are you from London? Um. Okay. So, Raymond, you're here. Welcome I back. Am. I think. Well, Nick, uh, I'm we'll surprised you're out. here. When I got my phone I back, I got a text from you that said, I'm not going to be on tomorrow night. And I was like, me too. Did he send me this yesterday? I'm like, were you able to piece your phone back together like with uh, glue parts and stuff like that? You're just like slowly. Mat- okay, first of all, you know when I crack my screen, right? I never realized how small parts in a, in a phone really are and how oh, difficult yeah. it is to replace something on a phone. The screws are microscopic. Yeah. And you got to be like, you got to buy like special equipment. Yeah, like this um, screwdriver, like this. It's real. Small. Yeah, yeah. Shit's crazy. That's what she said. Right. Real small. Um, Jacob, not. Triv, welcome back as usual. You guys Hello. are here. You know who you are. You guys are Twilight Zone <clears> fans, <throat> I think. I know. I know. Triv comes on for the for the free cookies, and Jacob comes on for the free sex jokes. Come on, <laughs> um, all the hookers and blow. That's exactly. Right. Yeah. Except we're all out of blow. Um, well, we got Raymond. Yay! <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, yeah. we got Raymond. I, I don't know week, if people have run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no Alex this week because we 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 promised Raymond that we would have him on eventually. Um, so he's like, I actually asked you, Raymond. I actually asked you which episode you want to come on because were you on one of the four seasons episodes already? Am I forgetting? Yeah, mute. Okay, yeah, that we episode. Have, I forgot about that episode. We need to have an episode where every single guest we've ever had comes on at the same time. Oh, Jacob. And it's, it's called just the like, witching pool. <laughs> like, there's people talking and nobody I, moderates it. I was on mute and realized someone from <clears throat> Touch by an Angel was on. The main girl uh... was on. So then I said, let me do the other Touch by an Angel episode. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Jacob, were you on Were you on my um, Star Wars podcast when we did uh, Rise of Skywalker? Would I invite you on for that? I no. was on it. That, that was a shit show. Wait till we get to the bewitching pool when I do invite everyone that has been on this podcast on. That's gonna be a quality episode. We better, we're gonna pull out the alcohol for that one. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna be drinking anyway because that episode is a POS. That might be the worst episode of the series. Eh. Maybe, what we need to maybe. do is one of us need to advocate, like, go in and just to piss everybody off. If everybody's gonna hate this episode, one of us needs to be like the one who says this is the best episode ever and just like fires everybody up. <laughs> oh, so it's gonna be like a 12 angry men situation. Yeah, and just sits there and like no matter what everything everybody says, say the opposite. Be like, man, it was, right. it was just I don't know anything about the episode. Pull but... up a random number generator and assign <laughs> one person to be the bullshit I love oh, fake the loving time. the movie. We're gonna like bring that. we're gonna bring back the draft from the Vietnam War. We're gonna just draft people to come on. Because you know you know Zoom can fit five hundred people now, right? We need Let's 500 people to talk about the bewitching pool. That'd be insane. <laughs> Put it in the comments if you're down. Right. We'll invite you. Just open invitation. It'll be like a <laughs> fucking Twitter meet. <laughs> It'll be All like, of our uh, pictures will be this big. <laughs> right. Um, anyways, uh, so Passage in Lady Anne is an episode that is the penultimate episode of the four season. Um, Raymond, I got to ask you, what, you know, of all the episodes you could have chosen in the four season, there was quite many. What made you choose Passage on the Lady Anne? I remembered the ending. <laughs> All right. it, I, I remembered that and thought it was a cool idea, especially because, like, now old people just being on a ship to end their lives is a real thing. Like, instead of going to retirement homes, just stay on a fucking cruise ship for years at a time is the real thing that happens these days. Yeah, so I'm owning a, a Winnebago. And then after I selected it, the um, Angela Bassett series, 911, they started their series this year with basically the exact same plot, only the exact opposite of a couple who's been married for a couple of years, goes on a ship, and she wants to find all this other stuff to do to not talk to her husband. But in this episode, she's like, you work so much, we never get to talk. Let's get on a long-ass cruise so we have to talk to each other and see if we actually want to be together. So it's kind of like a thing in modern media has done this the exact opposite. 
motivation. Isn't the whole isn't the whole point of a cruise to like get away from each other and just get really drunk and then why to see the bill when you get off? Realize that's much. I mean, they drink. drank quite a lot. They were doing scotch and dry martinis and whiskey, and extra they were down glasses. in them like shots. Like, extra a dry, dry martini. martini, yeah, extra dry martini just means it's a shot of vodka or gin, depending on your martini. I, I hate <laughs> I always thought dry alcohol was like you know non-alcoholic drinks. That's what dry I was means you yeah. don't put the non-alcoholic stuff in it. Yeah, it's it's What's a lot it? of alcohol, so it sucks all the moisture out of your mouth. I I hate dry is the best. Term. I never knew what dry meant until I had dry alcohol, and I was like, ah, that's the perfect name. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, it's uh, it's like when you say like neat. I'm like, what the fuck does that even mean? Neat. Like, no it, ice. Well, I know what needs to be now. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it's like, can't you just say no ice? Why do you have to say neat? Neat. Neat. I did learn. Neat? I did learn what? working at Wait, a. I'm lost here. What are we talking about? I thought you're talking I'm about neat. alcohol. Alcohol. So... Yeah, I want a scotch neat or something like that. Oh, neat, neat. I thought you said meat. Like, well, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you have scot- I was scotch. Like, what meat. You... You meat. Meet the scotch. Meet the scotches. Yeah. Yeah. We're onto something. Um... That was script. Yeah, they do keep ordering alcohol that's just shots. Like they just Whoa. keep. The... Nah, shots let me get a mixer shot. without the mixer, just right? constantly. They like uh, they like that that band, the shot, 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 shot. shot you know, who is that? Um, I don't remember. Triple six. So, Recent so you came on for the episode because you're an alcoholic and you just wanted to talk about their drinking. Is that right? Uh, not unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I get it why you would come because this is um to be fairly honest, this might be one of the best episodes of the four seasons. Um, I really I think it, I think I liked it because it, it's in the end. I don't even think it really fits into the Twilight Zone lore or I, I okay. First of all, this whole episode opens up. I'm like I'm waiting for the. Uh, the ballast or some rope to break and cut all these you know people in half or something like that, and none of that stuff happens. Not, like ghost there's no reference. Yeah, go shit. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but there's nothing of that nature that happens in this episode. You think that oh maybe it's a ghost ship or maybe it's this, maybe it's that, and really it's just a story about people that are mm-hmm. unhappy or don't want to come to the realization of time and how things kind of end eventually and they want to you know have one last go ahead on a thing called the lady Anne. and i don't know i don't know what you guys think about that i don't know if you liked it i don't know if you disliked it i mean what do you guys think i think that's what makes it work is that the original story they were a newlywed couple and they were happy and in love but in this version they're six years into their marriage and the wife wants to save the marriage And they're so distracted, like we are, about their relationship and what they're doing that you forget it's Twilight Zone and something messed up is going to happen. And they're so oblivious to there's an undertone here that when it hits them, even at the very, 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 very end when it happens, one of the characters doesn't even realize what's happening. Yeah, he doesn't realize that they're going to the white shores of Valinor. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I brought that thing up. I said, "Are they going to the Greylands?" I was so confused about what was happening. They're going to, but, to the far green country. Yeah. That's the white when, when, it, when it first hit, I assumed that it was a. I, I thought the same. I thought it was like a death ship, and they're like trying to keep them off of it because you're I mean, not dead. Davy you're Jones? not old. Yeah, exactly. I, I figured they were like transporting old people to the Greylands or the you know heaven or whatever Davy Jones does, but no, it ends up being a story about just people having to not wanting to accept what they truly love will not eventually be there anymore and it's it's very somber and very sweet story but it's also very sad and very depressed not really depressing but it's just a very sad story about you know what could happen if this young couple kept going the route they were going and I don't know. It's a, it's a very weird Twilight Zone episode. It's not something that they do very often, or if they do it, they throw in that you know aha <laughs> moment, or they throw in that you know the moment with like in Kick the Can where the you know the adults become kids. And I I, I don't know. I like I really like the episode, but 
is it really truly a Twilight Zone episode? I mean, is it an episode that Ross Sterling's like, you know, Charles Beaumont, you know, you're you're very, very sick. I, I'm, I'm just saying hypothetically, are you very, very sick? You know, since you're sick, maybe we'll just have you write this episode and we'll try to fit in the, the lexicon of the Twilight Zone itself. But this could be an episode that fits into any story that you like a drama show or something like that. Or I, I don't know. I, it's weird. I've said this to you, Nick, in other conversations that some of the season four reason why mm. I don't like is because it seems more like an Outer Limits episode. Yeah. And did Beaumont write for Outer Limits too? Do you know? Um, I don't know because he died like two, like a couple of years after this. He died in oh, 67. So it, I, I don't know much about the, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know much about the Outer Limits. So I don't know if this, were these the kind of episodes what, that go by. <laughs> <laughs> What were these the kind of episodes that would premiere on Outer Limits, like these types of stories? In my memory, yes, that it's mm. a creepy situation. Outer Limits were a horror situation or a sci fi situation that you're in this unusual world. That's always mm. the way I saw that show. And then season four does that so much that I always thought, well, if I wanted to watch that, I'd be watching Outer Limits. There's a reason why I watch. Twilight Zone, 22 minutes, we go in, there's a twist. Oh my God, that wasn't a real twist. Boom, Twilight Zone, we're done. And, and Outer Limits didn't give me that, so that's kind of <laughs> why I didn't watch Outer Limits. I feel like the Outer Limits was the redhead stepchild of the of the anthology sci-fi series. They control the vertical and the horizontal. Yeah, it was more horror sci-fi focused. The yeah, it usually was. It was a little bit more horror sci-fi. The Twilight Zone would have like some drama. There's usually something unexplainable, at least in it. But Twilight Zone seems like there's more, uh, sometimes more personal, like drum dramatic stories. And mm -hmm. Outer Limits always had some type of, well, from what I remember, always had some type of like monster or horror sci-fi kind of thing. I could be wrong, but that's what I remember. Go by. Did you know? Did you know Charles Beaumont wrote the story for Brain Dead? Which brain dead? No. Yeah. The 1990 Bill Pullman, Bill Paxson movie. Really? Oh. Wow. Yeah. I think we've said this. We've had this conversation because I remember saying We that. have. I just realized that I was thinking about that <laughs> as the exact same thing. Because when you say brain dead, I think of Peter Jackson's Dead Alive, aka Brain Dead. Right. Yeah. Is that is the Australia or is the uh, New Zealand version? Is yeah. it called Dead Alive or Brain Dead? It's Dead brain Alive, dead. I think. Or is it? Brain I think dead? it's Dead Alive here, Brain Dead over there. Isn't Wasn't it? it the other? What? No, I think it's the other way. No, I mean, it's dead. I'm, Why are they gonna I always change? knew it was dead alive when I was a kid. Let's let's see. Let's let's put an end to this. Why are they going to change it? They did that like Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Because we don't know what a, ph stupid. a philosopher over here is a different thing than what it is over in the UK. Yeah. yeah, I've had this conversation on Twitter way too many times to count. Like in the US, a philosopher is an old dusty guy reading books in the library basement. Yes, I know you've watched uh full metal alchemist so you know that a philosopher has the gold stone and that nonsense but when that fucking book came out a philosopher was a guy reading books in the library yeah. basement not a sorcerer we didn't yeah. call a philosopher a sorcerer in america when them books came out a philosopher so was a guy who no goddamn told sense. people like that explained to people about things brain dead that's oh, just that's dead alive in north america and brain dead in oh. New Zealand and most other countries. It's like when you change all you need to ki is kill the edge of tomorrow to live, die, repeat. It just doesn't make any sense. That's like the it. incredible Mr. No Legs being called. I can't Did, remember what it was. Was called. that accurate though? The live, die, repeat? Wasn't that just the tagline of the movie that they put? Yeah, and they said, said no. And then they, they changed the title. And people yeah, they just said edge of tomorrow is too confusing. Was, or all you need to kill is to, all, or like too confusing. All you need to like, kill is the name of the manga. Graphic novel. Yeah, I'm just okay. saying like like they, they thought it was too confusing for people. It's like you underestimate the value of what people but live, die, do, repeat do not realize. Just sounds like a sci-fi Tom Cruise action flick. I mean, it I sounds guess. like what I do every day when I have to fart. Um, anyways. Uh, so passage Mr. on. Oh, no sorry, I was going to say really quickly, talk about Mr. No Legs. Red Letter Media finally got to it this week for, uh, for their best of the worst. I it saw that. <laughs> Freaking awesome. It was glorious. Well, Passage on the Lady Anne is an episode, once again, that deals with a couple played by Lee Phillips and Joyce Wynn Patton who decide they want to take a cruise instead of going on a plane. 
that's your first sign that there's going to be something spooky happening on this ship. There's no real ships going out except for this thing called the Lady Anne. They're like, oh, we'll take it. We'll take it. And um, it leads to a bunch of old people trying to buy them out from not getting on the ship. And um, I don't know. Once again, I thought this was a ghost ship. I thought this was a something. I, I did not expect this to be about old people regrets and young couple fighting. And um, I, don't I don't know think it was about old people regrets. Young people they fighting. regretted a lot. They regretted a lot in the episode, though. Like they talked a lot about like, I don't think I didn't see it so much as regrets. It was more a case of like the changing of the guard kind of a thing where like, you know, they don't build things like they used to. They're, you know, taking away the Lady Anne because, you know, people, you know, because two weeks is too long to be on the ocean. People don't know how to relax. People don't know, you know, that passing of time more than anything else. They just need to watch Mr. Science for your theater 3000. Well, yeah, duh, everybody yeah, should. they don't know how to relax. Yeah, well, their original argument is kind of like what the salesman at the travel office says. It's like, oh, it's 12 days to France and then six more hours to England. And you can get there in the six hours to London. And the wife's trying to say, no, this is our state of our marriage nonsense. So I want to actually talk to him. He Once we get there, he's going to be doing business. So I want a chance to do something. And they offer them the equivalent of a hundred thousand dollars to leave. Yeah, that's crazy. He asked and, for a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, yeah, he asked for the equivalent of a million. <laughs> and uh did they take it? No, because they're idiots. I'm like, you know, offer me ten thousand dollars, I will jump off the boat right now. I will I will disappear as long as I have my monies. Well, I don't know. And a waterproof um, check. But then right. you'd be divorced, Nick, and he wants to listen to his wife for the, apparently the first time in their six years of marriage. Which that point, was I don't really think he wanted to listen. I think he was just making a point. He was like, I said I'd do it, and I'm a man of my word. I'll do this shit. I don't want to, <laughs> but I will. And I don't need money because I'm a businessman. I'm going to a <laughs> business conference. <laughs> I'm wearing business business. business. business, business, business. We do business. It was an interesting. I thought that the couple did a really good job. Like, they were both, like, I don't know. They felt believable to me. I loved her. I thought she was great. Oh, yeah. I thought he was too, but I thought she was, because she's definitely the center of the couple for at least the first half. I thought she was really good. Like, I mean, I really liked her. Her performance was mm -hmm. like very natural and just seeing it, it was legit. I really liked her. To be fair, like the, the guy, the, the husband's up his own butt so much that he forgot that his wife might be in the bedroom with her 60s nighty on and uh, wanting to. She got so from an weird. old lady. That was yeah, so yeah. freaking weird. What you I got, got, what you I got, got Miss So and So that we just met gave it to me. Oh God, I I am not of the sixties. I don't wear nightgowns. But my God, I you you would not catch me dead in that. I'd rather walk you around know, naked. You know what would have been a great Twilight Zone twist if fucking Burgess, the old man, was in the bed with her. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like a younger man because he like is yeah. Stupid. That would have been an amazing twist. An old man, the the uh, husband becomes an old man. It's like a like a fountain of youth type of situation, but like in a horrifying scenario. So I actually these old like people are these old Rocky people are actually picture show creature of the night flesh. scene. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, like that's what out. I thought was coming. Like when she's wearing the old nighty, I assumed uh, that that was like all the people that were on the boat were initially young, but then they get on the boat and they age or whatever. Like I assumed that's what was coming with that whole thing. Creature of the night. Yes, exactly. Creature of the night. I honestly thought it was what it was the whole time. <laughs> From the start, I was like, they're going to die. <laughs> These people are going to die. <laughs> well, I assumed All it was the... like David or uh, the, like but... Flying Dutchman type thing. Yeah. yeah I didn't but... know how, but I thought that they were going to, this boat, everybody getting on this boat is going to die. Um, but the question is, the, the, trying to get them off. It's so ambiguous on whether they actually did die or they, uh, they went off to an island somewhere with the Lady Anne because it like, it ends basically with them. Nobody knows what happened to it. It's like almost like an Amelia Earhart situation. It's like the ship disappeared and nobody knows what the fuck happened to it. Maybe it sunk. Maybe they died. Maybe they went off to Lover Lane Island or something. They shit. went to the White Shores. Well, we can right. get to that. Oh. We can get to the ending narration after we get to the opening narration. <laughs> okay, Why Alex. Always the people <laughs> that are visiting <laughs> that remember this, Nick. <laughs> I know I remember. I just I tend to like want to do it later, but 
And, uh, we got to have our guest to be pleased. God. <laughs> um, no, I mean, that's fine. We can do the opening narration because I got to feed my cat anyway. So. I feel like we used to be better at this. We we did, but then we turned into a podcast that actually has coherency when it comes to um, so a young couple, being fun. A young couple books a ship that they were told is unacceptable. And then Rod comes on our screen. With his hands crossed. Um, go ahead and read it, Jacob. I'll be right back. I got to feed the cat. Portrait of a honeymoon couple getting ready for a journey. With a difference, these newlyweds have been married for six years, and they're not taking this honeymoon to start their life, but rather to save it. Or so Elaine Ransom thinks. She doesn't know why she insisted on a ship for this voyage, except that it would give them some time. She'd never been on one before, certainly never one like the Lady Anne. The tickets read New York to Southampton, but this old liner is going somewhere else. Its destination, the Twilight Zone. Ooh, sound and sultry. Mm. I, I love Ooh. when they appear at the ship and uh, people are trying to convince them not to get on. They're like, uh, the deck chair is going to hold a baby. The uh, railings are decrepit and you'll probably fall off and die immediately. Like, uh, why are you on the ship that, ah, we're old and eccentric. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's, uh, there are so many, like, little one-off lines that I absolutely love in this episode, in that respect. Like, they're just, they're kind of cheeky. Yeah. They're sticky. Also sticky, yeah. There was, yeah, the whole orgy line as well. <laughs> Is that, I, love... yeah, I caught that, and I was like, did he say orgy? <laughs> he does. <laughs> they show up on the deck in these, like, uh, it looks like we're not late for the orgy. Yeah, I was like, maybe it has. A Wasn't that in context. the bar though? The orgy line. Yeah, in the bar. Yeah, in the big room. They go check out their room, and it's like this might be the most ridiculous room ever. And she's like, "Might be. It definitely is. Look how awesome!" And then they're like, "Let's just go to dinner." And they go to the dining room and the bar, and he's like, "Oh, well, looks like we're not late for the orgy." I'm I'm assuming that back then it had a different. I mean, the technically the name orgy just means like a culmination of a bunch of people, I guess, or things. So uh, according had... to Oxford, a wild party characterized by ex excessive drinking and indiscriminate sexual activity. Oh well, never mind. Also, also That's an instance correctly. of excessive indulgence in a specific activity. Oh, so, it's so like show. an orgy of buying, an orgy of drinking, things like that. We're an orgy of a podcast. We are actually, if you want. to... We always joked that an orgy, if you wanted to have an orgy, you had to have five people in one room with their shoes off. Oh. Who yeah, is me, we that came up with this definition? You can't you can't I be naked know. with socks on. That's just a terrible look. That is true. No, but honestly, I think um hang on, let me look up and see if it's an actual thing. Cause I could be crazy. Could be. I probably am. <laughs> a court. <laughs> According to okay, so there's an the Alabama orgy law. According to this law, an orgy consists of five barefoot people in bed. Sure. I was having an orgy with James Corden again. What? No, that's Is not five Alabama? people with their shoes off. We're trying to figure out when the husband says, "Looks like we're not late for the orgy." If he meant a sex party or a party. Well, no, well, I, I think mean it's in a, an instance of excessive indulgence. Is another version of the orgy or another version of orgy. I'm gonna say that's probably the one he was going with, not yeah. sexual party. Well, and the other Should've the been. other one is indiscriminate or excessive drinking could also be like a wild party with excessive drinking. All okay. right, what drinking orgy? Is? Secret ceremony ceremonial rites held in honor of ancient Greek or Roman deity, usually characterized by a ecstatic singing and dancing, with fun, a yeah. drunken revelry, a sexual encounter involving many people. Excessive that indulgence. One. That one. Excessive indulgence. Sexual encounter with multiple people. Many people. We'll go with that. Who are all over the age of 75. I'm I'm assuming that hey, experienced. Um, we like to call it experienced. Experience. Yay. I'm assuming that he means a drunken revelry. We'll just leave it at that. I mean, he's a Greek or Greek or Roman deity. I, I don't know. But anyways. So that that was uh, some quality speaking there, Jacob. I was I was I was clearly here for all of it, so I knew exactly you what you said. You were enthralled, said. intrigued, and absolutely delighted. I'm sure. 
He used his yes. sexy voice and it made us think of orgies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, very careful. That's the uh, the call of Jacob, the sexy voice. Kaka, orgy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. I do like sex. Uh, I, I'm, I'm aware. You uh, subscribe <laughs> to uh, Naked, Naked, Naked Attraction. Yep. Is that the name of it? The Naked Box People? <laughs> <laughs> is that the naked i don't even know the name of the show but i watched the shit out of it <laughs> how have i how how do you not know the name of the show like you have like an i don't watch memory. the title of it i watch what's in the show <laughs> uh, i'm sure Found yeah i figured you had an eidetic memory you know what that word is jacob holds the world record for hitting the skip opening button on that fucking show <laughs> yes <laughs> get to it he just repeats it over and over and over Let's see some like, skin. <laughs> I want to go. On that um, so okay, so passage of Lady Anne. They go on a voyage. Old people try to write him checks for one hundred ten thousand dollars. They say no, sir. They do not like it, and they get on the ship. And um, old people, old people throughout this. I mean, basically, it's you know, old people reminiscing about their lives, and you know, you know, Burgess hitting on you know the the Joyce Van Patten character and. Her and her, you know, Triv's 1960s nighty and yeah, I don't know. It, 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 there, there's frilly not, lace. Like, what's up? <laughs> a lot of yeah. frilly lace. Yes, right, right. <laughs> but um, I, I just like how like when they go on the ship and they're like you know talking about how the the sun is in a different direction than it was. They're going north instead of east. Who the hell notices that? I don't know, but he apparently he's so enamored by the where the sun is that he completely forgets that his wife disappears, and that nobody knows where she's at. I'm like, bitch, you're she's in the fucking wait for you to get some with her. The thing is, though, he like he first place he checks is the room, and then he goes other places, and then he comes back to the room, and she's like, oh, I've been here for ages. Right, right. I I just I don't know. I mean, Jacob, I gotta ask you for I gotta ask you the question. Did you enjoy this episode? Like, I know you've been really a proponent for the four seasons. Uh... I did. I really liked this episode. That was really good. Um, it, I thought it, it, it was, I mean, there's nothing particularly exciting that happens with the episode. And I wasn't like blown away by its like twist at the end or anything, but I just really liked the episode. It, it flew by, had an interesting story. I was interested the whole time. I really, you called it depressing earlier. I didn't really find it depressing. I thought it was kind of, I found it kind of uplifting, even though, you know, essentially all the people in the end die, except for the two. I still, it's what they wanted. You know, they were, they were, I looked at less of death and more of just like a nice end for them. And it's how they wanted it. And uh, I really like how they were getting off and the husband was like, what is going on here? I thought you liked us. And she was like, they do. You dumbass. We're but just pulling a gun on you. Making yeah, it in this life, yeah, just pulling about a gun. Um, but like, I don't know. And all the comment, most of the episode is them sitting around or standing around talking. And sometimes that can get kind of boring. But it didn't hear. It just it had good stuff to say the whole time. It hit all the beats that it needed to hit, and it kept me guessing. While I was pretty sure this boat was going to a you know an end with the people on it, and that's why they wanted them off. I wasn't sure exactly like of the specifics. And we didn't get specifics. That's another thing I like. They left it ambiguous, but we didn't need to know that because it wasn't about that. It wasn't about where this boat was going, how it was going to end and all that. Just that it did. It went away. And that's how those people wanted to go out. They wanted to go out on this thing that brought them such joy. And they did that. They lived very full lives. And they gave the gift of these people not only uh, being able to continue to live, but showed them, you know, what they were missing. Which I don't, I'm still kind of confused as to whether she just went to the bedroom and that's where she was. It's odd that she just disappeared while I was talking to her. Or if like the boat did something or if there was something mystical going on there. Well, I think the boat did something on its own, actually. Yeah. Twilight that's the thing, zone, like, it's the only Twilight Zone thing to happen. Yeah. Is he's in mid conversation and then she's gone. with this <laughs> argument of these old people are crazy because there's so much conversation. It, well, part of what makes it work with the conversation is that the cast is so huge that they can move on from person to person without well, hearing this one person's story yeah. for 20 minutes. You do two minutes of these people, two of these, two of these. Well, that uh, works. Well, that's the thing. Like the thing that I think you know, maybe nobody realizes that 
Once again, like I said earlier, this character, what is his name, Alan or whatever, he's got his head so far up his ass with his job, with how he how he kind of treats her, that he could be talking for, you know, Jacob, I know you're going you're gonna to hate this, but I think in The Simpsons there's a joke where um, Homer, <laughs> Homer is trying to come up with a good uh, comeback at someone, and it takes him so long that he's in the middle of a poker game. He's trying to make a comeback. It takes it so long. Then when he finally does the comeback, he's actually it's actually like four o'clock in the morning and everybody's gone to sleep. And the the one hosting the poker game is like, "Why are you still here?" So it might be a thing where he just like completely just doesn't he doesn't respect uh, Ellen Eileen's character that he just completely forgot that she was there and she just like walked away. She's like, "Yeah, I'll see if Burgess uh, is ready for some sex or something like that." So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Another thing that really helped it was the performances from everybody were just really good. I mean, they're obviously written well too. Mm. It gives gives away just enough, but not too much the whole time to keep you like, hmm, what's going on here? But like the characters and their performances, especially Joyce Van Patten, I thought she was fantastic. And Great. a lot of it rides on her. And uh like Lee Phillip was Lee Phillips the husband? Lee Phillips yes. was the husband. When he when it gets to just being him when he's running around the ship. I mean, he's good too, but like you miss her for a minute. She's she's in she's pretty much the center of all the other scenes. And then when she's gone, he does well, but it's because he has this whole thing about where's she at, where's she gone, and all this and that. So I mean, she really was she really tied everything together. And I thought all the uh, the older um, couples and stuff were done really well too. They were really just interesting. And I don't know, I really just really liked this. I enjoyed this watch. It was really good. Well, they some um, of them have. I was gonna say some of them have lost people, and that helps him realize that he's losing her, or in one case, has lost her. Yeah, and literally, it inspires him to to make it work or whatever. However, his brain works in that situation. Go ahead, Nick. Well, I think she's uh, always been waiting. I'm sorry. She's always. It sounds like she's always been waiting on him. Yep. Like their whole relationship, it's her waiting on him, her pining for him, her wanting him there. He's never waited. It's always on his terms. And now for the first time, and it's probably condensed, of course, like for a short show, but for the first time in their relationship, he's looking for her. He can't find her. He's pining for her. He's look, he he's like waiting or she's waiting for him. So uh, when he finally finds her, I think maybe that kind of sparks something alive. And he's like, oh man, I really, I do miss you when you're gone. You're, you're, you, you know, you're the woman for me. And realistically, probably would take a little bit longer than that, but you know what I mean. I think it's condensed down for fifty minutes. Well, I mean, it could also be um, a take on Charles Beaumont's realization of like mortality and how you know when they start becoming a certain age, they want to they want to feel like you know young again. They want to keep the things that are you know most precious to them. And the Lady Anne was precious to these people because of what it entails you know for instance like the old couple talks about you know 50 years ago they were married and this is one of the first things they did as a married couple and i think um the idea of the morality or mortality and the idea of like you know how, what things mean to you gives it actually a level of believability that a lot of twilight zone episodes don't and or sometimes don't and i think it does it pretty well I just got a question whether this is a Twilight Zone episode. This is the only thing that keeps me from like going, is this true Twilight Zone or is this a good anthology episode for a TV series? I mean, that's my only question. That's my only kind of nitpick is like, as much as I like it, it doesn't feel like a Twilight Zone episode. Even with the ending going, being ambiguous, like it disappeared. It's like, I mean, they, I, I guess, but I, I, I don't know. I think it's still a Twilight Zone episode. I just think that it, it does do some things different than we're used to. Like it doesn't have that bombshell ending. Like a lot of twilight zones will have that thing that's looming. And then in the end, it's like, ha, I gotcha. You know, you get your little twist there and we get that here, but it's not like for me, at least it wasn't like a, Oh my, a big thing. Um, but I get where you're coming from, how it does feel a little bit different than some of the other episodes we've watched, but I still think it had those tenements of twilight zone, the, you know, the, the freaky just left of center kind of unexplainable stuff. And then regular people dealing with that and learning some type of morality tale in the middle or less. Right. Or as they say, I find you freaky. <laughs> find you freaky. Uh, I like you a lot. There you go. Triv, what do you got? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I mean, it's it's certainly 
not a you know not what you would consider to be a traditional twilight zone episode when you think twilight zone but i mean that's the it still has that element of it keeps you guessing okay what is this thing you know that that something is is off i mean they it's not exactly a hidden thing you know like when the the climax of the of before the before the halfway point is oh we don't have to let you die dot 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 of boredom what (laughs) you're handing me a cucumber sandwich um but no i i think that it's it works as well as as a lot of those kind of you know like jacob said left of center um episodes um it's probably one of the absolutely most subtle uh twilight zone apps but i think it works generally Mm -hmm. what about you what she said so this is one that I, like I said, I did know the ending going in. It's one of the few season fours that I remember. And it's good to watch through it, knowing where it's going and seeing the subtleness of these conversations of, like I said, a super large cast. And one of the trivias is that this cast is so large, it's the only episode where they scrolled the cast instead of just putting a template with a picture of five names or something like that. Absolutely. I was amazed the amount of people that I recognize. Like there's a movie from the, I think it's the thirties um, called I married a witch. And the, the kind of short guy that threw the glass in the fire was um, the dad of this, witch. you've got the, the one couple that both of them are in my fair lady. There's a fair amount of folks that repeat as far as twilight zone folks. Yeah. The, um, the guy who, Quote, wasn't supposed to let them on the ship. He's in the Lincoln episode, and he's in the silence as, like, the Beckkeeper guy. Yep. So, yeah, this is, like I said, this is one I knew the ending, and it's good to see, like, everybody's reasoning. You go, there's every, a lot of people have speaking parts, and, like, the bow tie wearing bastards that want to scrap this ship and ruin what we, as a generation of 70 year olds loves so much it's a communist plot yeah, yeah. <laughs> one person says it, it does say it's a communist plot which is insane but mm. it's uh i i think surly surly just put that in there because like he i think he's pressured to be like fuck the russians and so he just had some random character put that line in there <laughs> but well the question i i, I honestly have and truly have is LeVon Johnson directs the hell out of this, but would it have been better if Bob Ju- uh, Guccione had directed? Who? Huh? <laughs> I don't know the difference, honestly. Who? Sorry, Nick. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. You're just you guys, we don't know you guys know a lot of stuff, but come on. You guys know who should know who Bob Guccione is. Come on, people. Okay. Is he the guy like that directed name. Freaked? No. I like his name. No, that was... Uh, I know, Alex, Alex Winter. Winter. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just trying to be stupid. Bob he Guccione... Sounds like- was the uh, creator of Penthouse? Oh, I thought that was what's his name? No, that's uh, that's Hustler. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. okay, okay. No, yeah. Bob Guccione put all the porn scenes into uh, Caligula. Oh, oh, Guccione. Um, wouldn't know, Passage, Lady Anne, is... Passage on Lady Anne? Wouldn't that have been better with like old people porn? Yes. <laughs> Uh, cocoon if all the actors actually were <laughs> oh god you can call it, as they say in uh Zach and Mary cocoon. speaking of which Reno Williams does have Wilford Brimley in it yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah Wilford Brimley and Jessica Tandy or uh, oh Donna Vici watch out honey my diabetes I, I do up. have an honest question about uh, oh, yeah. episode uh, we you guys and I have talked a lot in season four about how the episodes are extended. Some of them are clearly 22 minute episodes that got turned into 42 minute episodes or however long they are. And is this an episode that actually could have been extended into an hour and a half? I think it's perfect where it's at. Like honestly, legit. I think it's perfectly paced to a point where it doesn't need to be any longer or any shorter. I think that it okay. We had another one like this. It was the one with the robot, the robot man, uh, one of the earlier ones. And I the think lead it, in that wasn't an episode of Touched by an Angel, by the way. Oh, I think <laughs> that it could have been. Could you tell this story 
in 22 minutes. Yes. Could you tell this story as well as they told it and have the same emotional impact as it did in 50 minutes? No. I think that that's what this, that's like the core of this story is not so much just the story itself, but the impact and the, the, the characters and the building and all that. I don't think you could have done the same amount as effectively in 22 minutes that they did here with 50 or 52 or whatever it is. If he gets longer to look for the wife and stuff, can he expend? Can he extend it into an hour and a half? Make it a movie instead of a Twilight oh. Zone episode? Like Nick said, all the time it doesn't seem like Twilight Zone. If you made it like I, a drama and, movie, could it? Could that scene, work? Had a sex scene in. Everybody loves. <laughs> yeah, it's Bob Cuccioni. Uh, no, I, I, in all honesty, I don't believe adding another thirty minutes or forty minutes really, really helped this episode because I think it's perfectly like there's no, there's nothing to add into the story to to justify another forty minutes. I mean, you just be have the old people talking for forty more minutes, and like okay. at some point, it outstays its welcome. To be really right. honest, okay. I, I was just yeah. wondering because season four. We've all focused on, hey, could this have worked shorter? And we, no, no, I, I get what we you're all saying. were like, so intrigued by the characters. I was just wondering, is this a rare episode that could have actually worked longer? Raymond's I mean, like, like, can this, this work longer? Had... And that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the one thing you could have added, because the story is very yeah, simple. Musical. Like, at end of the, yeah, there you go. End of the day, it is a very, very simple premise. You know, guy and girl are, have drifted apart. You know, wife makes one last Hail Mary to try and, you know, rekindle things. And so they spend time together on a boat. The only thing that you could have done to oh, add to boat. this, and it wouldn't have added anything to it, would have been to see them like pre, like getting on the boat. You know, you see the play out of, of how frustrated she is as compared to taking her word for it on the boat. Yeah, but I certainly guess not you're right. Needed. Like the, just her saying, I'm frustrated is enough. To do it in like we've talked about shortening episodes with like the time travel one. He, he could just start with him saying, oh, I tried to time travel back and it didn't work because of this and this and not yeah. show 15 minutes of it. Right. Uh -huh. So in this, her, him, her just saying, hey, I'm frustrated because you were going to go to London by yourself and leave me at home. And that's not OK. And I think that. I, just, I see what you're saying. I think that like with that episode you're talking about, I think he could have said that stuff and we would have still, we did not gain anything from seeing it. Yeah. Like seeing it or someone just telling us that, oh, he went back and tried to stop Hiroshima. He tried to stop, uh, I can't remember, somebody being yeah. murdered and all that. We could have seen, we could have heard that and we wouldn't have lost anything. Mm -hmm. With this one, seeing the journey and seeing them interact and seeing that, their you know the state of them yeah we could have been told that i mean he tells us in the beginning he tells us in the in the opening narration these newlyweds have been married for six years and they're not taking this honeymoon to start life but rather to save it so we know right there why they're doing yeah. this and that they're on the rocks but with something like that that's more emotional and more about feelings i think when you see it and you have time to to witness it that's when you get a better idea of it now these other like with the time travel thing it's like we all know about Hiroshima and Nagasaki and if oh, he went back to try and stop it and they couldn't okay so that's what I think with that and I, I know you like the acting of Joyce Van Patten in this one and I think his acting of just being so closed probably does do enough summary of we just know this is how he acts yeah and yeah. we don't need to we don't need 15 20 minutes of acting that way him acting like that in the travel agent office is enough for us to know yeah. that um, this is how they're he clearly is. Um, um, estranged, and yeah. she's clearly pining for him and wanting him to like open up and like you know be my husband. And he's he's clearly over it. Well, so did, um, let me ask you guys this question: Did you think that the 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 couple was dead at any point? Like maybe like this was a. Uh them trying to keep the couple from dying. Maybe they got hit by a bus or something. I mean, I, I know it sounds like I'm joking, but like, do you think this was that they could have been souls that were that people, these old people were trying to save? Um, I think I didn't, I didn't think that, but I might just be dead. Given the time and place, I, <laughs> I so, can see it. Yeah. Given, given like a sixties format, I don't think that would have been a thing that would have so much happened. I mean, obviously, you've got things like um, It's a Wonderful Life where you kind of have that premise, but they weren't 
these shows weren't subtle in the way that they went about it. If it yeah. if, if there had been something that was happening, you would have had some inkling of it beforehand, even with something like the Twilight Zone, if that was a thing. I did question yeah, like if they would have the Willoughby episode. Like it's not that it's, it's not subtle. I mean, it's subtle. Yeah. But he stepped off the train. He kept dreaming about it, and then stepped off the train at the end. Uh, it wasn't I, I was, dead. Sorry, I no, listened to a lot of podcasts. I've been listening to like Creepy and No Sleep and all these horror podcasts. And yeah, there's a couple. There's a lot of episodes where someone's like on a bus to the dead or of the dead or whatever, and they don't realize that there are yeah. dead people on this. Basically, what's the uh, fucking boat into heaven or hell or whatever? Oh, River Styx. And, yeah, yeah. They, they don't realize they're on the River Styx boat. And that is a kind of thing that could have been in this. Like I said, I knew the ending of this episode going in, so I didn't have thoughts about what was going on. But I can, I, I think that's what they wanted you to think, is that they go in like, why is everyone here old? Why is everyone 75 years old? And I looked it up. I did look up the actors because I'm a psycho. And all the actors are 74 or older. Wow. Isn't it nice to have actors and actresses that are actually the age of the character in the show? (laughs) Unlike uh, all the passengers, the youngest passenger is 74. And that's the guy that comes up to them, the widow that comes, widower that comes up to them during their. Uh, yeah, Burgess. Table meeting. Yeah, Burgess. The, Burgess is seventy four. Everybody else is seventy five or older. So the husband was right about the ages. What What if these old people were super angry and pissed off because they were out ready to have an old person orgy? They're like, damn it, we can't do that anymore. We have to Bring hide. Bring on it. the Viagra. I always a uh, lemon party. I always uh, I thought I think that that's kind of what tipped me or told me that like oh yeah they're going to die i never got like a supernatural vibe for whatever reason while i was watching it i always thought that yeah they're just going to die and the thing that solidified it for me was that everybody here is old i'm like mm-hmm. this is a death ship but i didn't, I never got the feeling <laughs> yeah. they were going to do something like bad and i figured it was pretty much what it what it was that these young people got just accidentally mixed up in this thing that's not like a bad thing but you know i don't think they're wanting to die and that is something I liked about the episode too, is like the uh the the uh sinisterness of it. It's like there was like this sinister overtone the whole time of something else is going on. What is it? We don't know, but like you you like they would pop off with like, we don't have to kill you now, or you don't have to die. What? Uh boredom. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And like, have you told them yet? You haven't come on, man, you haven't told them yet. And like all that. I I really enjoyed the sinister overtone. Like, because things would start getting into the dramatic side of like these people's relationships, so which is ultimately what the episode's about is their relationship. But just talking about that, but they would come back with that every now and then of this sinister overtone uh, thing in the background, and I really liked how they did that. And I, I honestly like that they didn't explain it either. Did oh, they yeah. just scuttle the ship? Did they? Did the old people just sink the ship? Is that how it ends? They don't really. I, say I, I, yeah, just... they just disappeared. They just went off. I intend and... they went to an island and had. Massive amounts of orgies. orgies. They were going to die. <laughs> yeah, they all die, but we don't. We don't know how. Like, do they just Maybe... think this, you, to take to stick it to them bow tie wearing bastards? They just sunk the ship so it couldn't be scrapped. I mean, maybe they went out to be pirates and they end up like one eye Willie or something like that, and <laughs> they'll be like yeah. those pirates from uh, Monty Li- Monty Python and the uh, yes, yes, the, the old of pirates of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all at the edge of the earth. <laughs> Right, right. I was gonna say uh, they're like hell's grannies, but they're like hell's pirates. Yeah, hell's <laughs> old people. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I did like that about the episode. How I had that sinister overturn the whole time or undertone. I, I, I guess I'm the only one that didn't feel that way. I felt like it was like it felt cathartic, but it, it just felt very melancholy. Like you know, something was something was amiss. Well, you I, know. Didn't, I didn't get that. I thought that the old people were like happy to. They want this. They're. I think they all recognize. Hey, this is the end. We're at the end of our lives, and I want to go do this thing. Because I get the feeling they all went back to this ship after you know their young life, like throughout the years. And they really love this ship. It's some of the best times of their lives. They've lived their long, full lives, and they're ready to go now. And they're going out on their terms, and they're going out on this thing that they all love. It's kind of like a last 
soiree. And yeah. I guess like without any supernatural stuff going on, yeah, they probably went out in the ocean and somehow, like Raymond said, they just scuttled it. Um, or maybe it's something more supernatural, like it just kind of went and went to the afterlife. Valhalla. Valhalla. Jacob. Valinar. Maybe, maybe it's the ship from uh, Uncharted, Jake's Fortune. Which I haven't got to that part in that game yet. Oh, you, great. Play the you, first, you haven't played the first game yet? I have played the first game. I haven't played all the way through the first game. Okay, there's a so ship. Maybe. In it. Oh yeah, I saw that. Wait, I think I said. Anyway, Trey's going to get mad at us. Oh no, no, no. Uh, my, talking about video I, games. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that, like they talked about, they mentioned that uh, they were they checked the newspapers and all that stuff, and they never saw anything. I assume that they meant the ship generally. They didn't mean like that the fact that it was never seen or found. Like the ship uh, I, seems. I thought to... they just didn't see anything about about the. They, they were in the Bermuda Triangle. I don't like know, it just maybe. disappeared, and they never saw any articles about whether what happened with the ship, which might mean like, did the ship ever exist? But at that point, you're like, why was it at a travel agency? But I don't know. Enchanted maybe travel, travel agency. agency. Maybe when they go back to the travel agency, like, it's not there anymore. It's like they that travel existed. agency from uh, Vivarium. right? Nobody, nobody's seen yep. it, have you? Uh, no, it's no. on my list. Uh, but the great flag. By the way, you want to talk about ambiguity. Ambiguity done. What I think is right. And wait, like, holy fuck, have you seen Primer? That. Speaking of ambig- ambig- oh my god, Primer. That's a hard movie. Um, you okay? Wikipedia has an amazing write up about this. Uh, when it comes to the plot, it says she tells another passenger that due to Alan's unwavering devotion to his career, the two of them have not been sexually intimate ever since the honeymoon six years before. Did she ever say anything about them not having I don't know. relation? No. No. Not even I, in I'm a pretty 60s sure that, I'm, censor I way. This, why, yeah, I know it was the sixties, but I'm pretty sure the Twilight Zone would never have had. Oh, yeah. they weren't going to say, I mean, "Well, we, we haven't done earlier. the horizontal mambo <laughs> since then." But it could have been said in a sixties way that would, you know, not make it a, outrightly apparent. They're much not more that I noticed, then. like in the like, Jordan Peele version of this thing, like, you fuck my wife, either. you fuck my wife, and fuck my wife. <laughs> <laughs> It's called uh, Alan and uh, Eileen. How's, how's he do? Eileen? Uh, no. Uh, how would he do it in the the, the teacher sketch? Alan. Oh. In <laughs> Ilian. Ilian. E Ilian. E Ilian. Um. I love that. But guy. I mean, God is throwing. Damn it. <laughs> Is Tony breaking glasses in the the fireplace? Is that like a ritual that they do on a ship or something like that? Like I, I think he was just pissed. Yeah, well, no, they weren't pissed. They were just drinking. The bastards. They, now that is a, a thing. Um, that that's a. I don't. I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly what it is. But throwing your drink into a fireplace that, that has a meaning. I don't know specifically what. Yeah, I've Hang seen on. it in a couple old movies. Yeah. It's not always just like, like out of anger. It's like it's almost like party a party uh, thing. But yeah, or the, like a Christmas kind of situation. On a boat. Yeah, it's something like that, but I don't know specifically what it means. I've got a fireplace. Yeah, I can't hang I've on. got some wine glasses. And okay, throwing glass into the fireplace is a popular practice for. Well, that can't be right. Um, <laughs> what? What? Do tell. No, no, no. I was just going to say throwing gla- broken glass into a fireplace is a popular pra- practice for gas fireplaces and fire pits. Um, heat tempered glass has been tumbled smooth. Basically, you know, you have those fancy fire pits that have like the glass in them. Yeah. yeah. That's basically what this is saying from AI, which is stupid. Um, let's my, see. My, my stomach is a gas fire pit. The idea of throwing a glass into a fireplace or against a wall is after a toast is supposed to indicate that nothing could ever exceed the importance or greater emotion of the toast. Thus, the glass might be smashed either to emphasize the toast or to assure the glass will hang on. Mm-hmm. anyway basically it's to to make sure that it's yeah that's why that's what i said that that makes sense because he's like up on his high horse so i'm right the lady Anne deserves to exist and then bow tie where ambassadors don't understand smash emphasize your point of how right you are that's like yeah, an exclamation bow ties are cool yeah <laughs> so are fezzes yeah maybe I, they were I, angry because they were being served pineapple on pizza Oh shush! Oh my God, this again—the I mean, second most popular topping in the country of Australia, by the way. Yay! Well, yeah. stay in Australia. Damn crazy Aussies! I looked it up once. It's pepperoni, then Hawaiian pizza in Australia. Actually, I do not know why. Pepperoni and pineapple is pretty banger. Pepperoni, ham, jalapenos, pineapple. Ooh. Yum! 
Fun uh, fact of the way Hawaiian pizza was in fact invented by a Greek guy in Canada ripping off Chinese food. I can see that. Where, where's mm. my no sir? I don't fried like rice that. on pizza. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, I had um, crab rangoon pizza one time that was pretty good. Crab rangoon pizza. Yeah, it had a really thin rangoon. crust, um, like a like a wonton crust. I got a gift. Only crab problem rangoon. is that's Chinese, Chinese food with cheese. I don't think it had Chinese food. I don't think it had cheese on it. Well, it yeah, it has it ricotta. Crab rangoon is like either ricotta or cream cheese. Yeah, depends on which one. But I mean, like right, like uh, uh, you know, when we say cheese, like you know, uh. Like cheddar cheese or mozzarella, I guess. On well, pizza. this didn't have that on it. It was like imitation uh, crab. It was okay. um, drizzled with sweet and sour and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm. Well, we've got like Nick's answer. Pizzas. We've got, oh, I love barbecue pizza. Yeah, we've I've got gotten Nick that a couple Nick's times. Answer. I'm a professional chef, Nick, so I can I can vouch for this. I, 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 uh, hey, I can make some my vote mean macaroni and cheese. So uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yay. Mean macaroni and cheese. If you can, what you need to do is you need to learn how to make mean chili as well. And then mean cornbread. And you take the chili, you mix it with the macaroni and cheese and make a banging ass meal. Okay. Jacob. Put some onions and Yum. stuff in that bitch and there's some spices. And then put it in a pan, flatten it out, take your cornbread mix, drizzle it all across the top, cover the whole thing with your mix, put it in the oven, let it rise. Then you've got this beautiful cornbread with macaroni and cheese and chili underneath it. You scoop it out. Just... Dude, can I get that recipe? That sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean... uh, Jacob, the true test of our friendship is Cornbread, is it the sweet cornbread or the buttermilk cornbread? The sweet cornbread. I love sweet cornbread. All right, I'm out. I can do both. Um, I can do both. Um, I've really never had buttermilk. Well, I, I don't think I've ever had buttermilk cornbread. It, 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 is, it is so good. If you're eating something sweet, if it, if what you're eating is sweet, you know, the buttermilk or the non-sweetened cornbread. If you're not eating, if you're eating something that's a little bit more muted, the sweet cornbread comes in good. And sweet cornbread See, is usually a bit more uh, uh, moist. This has been your food break of the Twilight Zone. I imagine, <laughs> I imagine that it was actually quite good. Like they're 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 obviously well off. So yeah, and and I probably... like how they talk about how bad this ship was, and it looked kind of like I mean for the sixties, it it looked kind of nice. I think yeah. they were trying to be facetious though, like they yeah. were trying to talk people off the boat. Yeah, it all they did was ornate. like move the st- the baluster like a little yeah. bit. It's just like yeah, in the beginning when they're talking crap on the ship, they're being they're they're clearly they're that. clearly making fun of the set design. They're like, look at this set. Look at this, <laughs> this whole wall. Lots of wood. <laughs> when look at this today, door made out of fiber wood. These days, uh, cruise ship food is terrible. What was it like in the sixties? Just boiled ham and shit. I, 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 see, I, I would argue like, that no one eats better. food. I, no one eats food in this entire episode. All they do is drink. Not terrible. <laughs> Not all. I heard it. the cruise ship food's bad, like really good now. It 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 it, it depends on okay. Right. If you go on a cruise, if you go to the buffet, <laughs> that's like in the usually oh, yeah, they, usually terrible. like a big buffet. That's going to be it's a buffet. That's what you're getting. That that's what you're eating. If you go to like the captain's dinner, that's legit. That's like gourmet food. But I'm going to tell you, when every cruise I've I've only been on three, but the ones I've been on, the best damn thing. And now, granted, I was drinking a lot too. Was the all night pizza buffet. It was like just like this this buffet of pizza that was just there twenty four seven. It was the oh. best pizza owner. It was the it was trash, but it was so good. I went on one cruise and they had escargot and steak, and escargot was so good. I, it was so good. It was crazy how good that stuff was. Were you on a cruise called the Lady Anne? <laughs> uh, the Norwegian version, so I don't know mm. what that is in Norwegian. Mm. There you go. You couldn't. And All I, the I... people were just as freaking old, though. <laughs> Before Man. we make this any harder for Nick to edit, should we ever talk about the episode? <laughs> no, no. Actually, I had something I had to bring up. Um, oh, sorry. This go is ahead. the ongoing four season of having Batman characters. In uh, a four season episode, Alan Napier played Albert Penny's worth in the 60s Batman series. I was gonna say the name sounded really familiar. No, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying, like, this is like we had the Penguin, we had Catwoman, oh, we had, it is uh, him, Mr. Gordon, and Napier the, was Jack Nicholson's 
Joker's yes. last name in the new one, and that was a callback to him, I believe. Mm-hmm. Right. Which uh, it's just funny. It's like once again, yeah, it's like when you have all the Star Trek uh, actors in the the Twilight Zone, th- there must have been like a they were friends type of situation. But you look you at, like so you look at like Trek. British. You look at like British yeah. actors, and you know they kind of make the rounds between all that stuff. I mean, look at how many mm-hmm. of these guys in 60s television and probably today too they make the rounds and so they're in like you know one episode of this and one episode of that and they might be have a reoccurring role here or there i think that's just the way that hollywood kind of operates back at least back then no i i know i'm just it's just funny it's like oh it is it's cool before batman before star trek there was the twilight zone actually um alan napier and the creator of thomas the ink engine are from the same city they should have worked on something together Thomas the Butler. What? Thomas Pennyworth. Thomas the Tank Engine, the the famous TV show. Oh, yeah, the the yeah that guy. Yeah, the, little, the train. He's they like, call the guy who it. created it is okay. called Rev W. Audrey. Audrey. Uh, but no. Um. So, passage of lady, passage of lady, and Batman villains. Uh, Joyce Van Patten, touched by an angel. Um, sexy 90s with way too much fabric yeah <laughs> bob guccione um throwing glasses I mean, it didn't and... even have a detachable crotch what the hell the know, most right? ridiculous room ever i know it is tie wearing it. bastards <laughs> do you think the bed vibrated <laughs> never there. Absolutely. They, they probably didn't have enough quarters they probably just like it would have been like nickels were... back then you just request them to sail into rough seas right <laughs> You could do like uh, the bed just like floats back and forth, like a, a I don't know, something out of a little wheels, Mel Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit. I don't know. Like Alan finally gets his shit together, finally finds the passion for sexy time with what's her face, Eileen. I mean, come on, Eileen. They, they Marian... come on. She, he literally comes on Eileen, you know. <laughs> 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 that, that, the uh, the guy the guys are crazy come on I mean, that's where they got the idea from you gotta spend that time in the lifeboat somehow it said they found, were found like two days later I mean, maybe dixie night runners that, thank like, you nick i needed this oh come my god on, <laughs> oh shit he was that's telling good. her to come on eileen or he, she was like she was like come on eileen and then Burgess just comes oh, out. He's like, right, 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 right. He's like, with his tie back and forth. I don't know. Ooh. Maybe, they, maybe that's what the Dix, the Dixie's Midnight Runners were a fan of. Eileen, <laughs> have you seen oh the God. Family Guy joke yeah. about that? With Dixie's Midnight Runners? Yeah. Nah. Lois says, "Oh, this reminds me of the night I spent with Dixie's Midnight Runners," and it shows her in bed with the entire band, and she gets up, and the lead singer says. I just came up with an idea for a song. What was that woman's name? Like, I don't know. Maybe Eileen? (laughs) (laughs) Family guy. A 10-year-old for like the past two years will randomly just walk into our room and go, PETA, the horse is here. (laughs) No, my my, my favorite joke. My favorite joke of family guy of all time is like, what are you doing? We're playing sex. He just shuts the door. (laughs) (laughs) We're playing sex. But, yeah. Um. Uh, good old Quagmire. Uh. Anyway, so uh, I, I apparently there's a pocket watch that goes overboard. She throws letters and contaminates. Yeah. What's the, the what water. was the deal with the pocket watch when he threw it out? That was like symbolic of. I, I think uh, that because he was on. always so on the clock, and you can see yeah. he kind of fidgets with it throughout. He came up early. Yeah, he had it earlier, but I was like, did I miss something? Like, was there more significance to that? To, I think it I was mean, just it was him wanting to always keep track of time to. To go do other things, and gotcha. man, Greenpeace let... must. I say Greenpeace must hate this episode because they're like throwing pocket watches and letters. old ladies contaminated water with letters. It's just like no wonder why their ship sank because they keep destroying shit. I'll buy do you think? Oh, do you think? Um, do you think Nature's... when the? Sorry, go ahead. Right? Is it? Do you think no when plastics, the couple left? Giving back. <laughs> <laughs> do you think when the couple left uh, on the little dinghy boat or whatever to find the the cutter that? They the the they just went and had like a big gigantic party and some someone hit like a iceberg or something like that. They would think this was gonna be a Titanic episode. Actually, that was one of the um uh 
one of the reviews started out as, is this the Titanic? It's like, no, obviously. But hey, God. more power. Come back. I mean, it was Royal Star Lines, and it's, it's like a homage to White Star Lines. So eh, come, on, Triv. come on, Triv. Um, but I, I like how when they have the when they have the the brunch with the older couple and you know the the old woman i think it's a glass cooper character gets her speech about you know oh, i can't remember exactly what she says but she gives a speech to uh joyce van patten's character and joyce van patten's like always talking about how she there's like it's a loveless marriage and he's always gone and there's a lot of moments like that where they're just like you know the, this these old people really care about this young couple and you know when when, when the the captain, you know, Alfred Pennyworth is like they, you know, they didn't try very hard to get him off the ship. It's just there's a level of like sincerity to these characters written, which I appreciate. So yeah, yeah. the the wife says something. Uh, Glass Cooper says something about being a bother, like oh, I've been a bother to him for years, apparently, or something. Yeah, like that. and she is in uh, Nothing in the Dark. Robert Redford, uh, death kills her and. That oh, is that who? That's Glass yeah. Cooper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the old lady. Yeah, yeah she's uh, yeah, she's in nothing in the dark. Oh, yeah, which is were you on that episode? episode? No, I uh, I talked about being on that one because it was one of the episodes that was recorded for season one and aired in season two, like the grave. So we talked about that that it was a season uh, one episode that got. F- got released for season two so we talked That's right. about i felt like that. we talked about that yeah we we talked about that episode because it was it had a connection to the grave which was the first episode i was on interesting i mean yeah it's mostly it's just that it's just this old cup i think i think what the idea of the premise of the story is is just to find a way to get these this couple not only off the boat but get them to rekindle their marriage and that's it's why i very, thought that they yeah. hadn't said anything yet Right. Like they kept on coming up, being like, "Have you told them yet?" No. What the hell, guys? I think it was because they did see that there was an issue, and they were like, "Let's, as one last, you know, good deed. Let's 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 remind this couple why they're a couple. Let's remind these two what love is and what's important in life, and not just that." So I feel like that's why they were holding out. Right. Maybe not. Find out what love is. What love is for? What's love got to do with it? <laughs> do with it. <laughs> Um, but I mean, other than that, they eventually uh pull a gun on him and tell him to get the fuck off the ship, you know, because we want to go shift the drift in our pants party on sea somewhere. And that's yeah, it's much like, it. they, uh, we, what we are we doing it? Are we doing it? Are we doing it? everyone keeps passing it off to someone else? And like, you weren't supposed to let him on the boat in the first place, you were supposed to tell him this. You're and finally one dude's just like, You were supposed okay, to be I'm pulling out one. a gun and I'm pulling out a gun and kick him off the boat. Like, I'm <laughs> we're done with this nonsense. You were the chosen ones, absolutely. You're supposed to destroy the You're ship, not join it. <laughs> Oh, I I man. thought I still think that that line she said in the end, her delivery of it, and just the line in general was like just really well done. I don't know, it's a it's a simple stupid thing, but it was just like the perfect like when he's like, "I thought you liked us," <laughs> and she's like, "They do," and I I was like, that told you everything you needed to know. That like while he wasn't getting it, she got it. She didn't get it totally. Oh, she like, got it all right. We, <laughs> <laughs> she, they spent enough time on that lifeboat. She got it a couple times. Oh yeah, right. Come Despite on, the really? fact that they were in the pool, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I I really like that that part of it was really really good. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> um, but once again, it doesn't. I, I know I know Jacob. You said like you know the, the twist is them dying, but it, like you can kind of like once again you can kind of see that coming. It's yeah. it, it, it's literally like in your face. It, there's no if ands and buts about it. It's like they're insinuating that they're going off into once again, it's not specific on what exactly happens to them. It's not the point of the story. The point of the story is the rekindling rekindling of the couple. It's just the ship disappears. So may they're in the, the may they're uh, offshore of the, like, you know, Bermuda triangle or something like that. Under the chrome maybe... engine in the sky. Yep. <laughs> Ahala. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah, the end of uh, Northman, they're just flying off in the, <laughs> into the air with a, yeah. uh, some of the, the guys that lost their wives like 30 years ago, I don't think they'd be up for 
let's just be miserable on this ship forever. So I think <laughs> they scuttled the ship and just all died. And because they're old and this is a meaningless ship and it didn't make the news because people that don't mean anything to people don't mean anything to people type of thing. Yeah. But do you think this is do you think the Hellbob comet was uh, flying over them? <laughs> <laughs> you think this is like a cult cruise? They drank the Kool-Aid? Absolutely. I mean it they almost the is like they all got on there with that expressed purpose that we're on here to die, whether it's it's kind of a death cult. <laughs> like it's not not a death cult. By the way, I'm sorry guys, the Hellbop comet will not be around back uh, in this area until 2364 so i mean That's if you okay. can live that long there are other weird things that'll take us out in the meantime so with that said maybe um, they can see those lights on the ship yeah there you go <laughs> maybe they're part of the hillbop comment maybe they drink the kool-aid i'm pretty what sure they didn't about? they were drinking tea and whiskey not That's together. Right, they weren't drinking coffee we're not all ruffians. Gladys gotcha, Cooper right. was the only one that wasn't wasted on this. Yeah. Oh, she she's did probably the most say, wasted. None for me. And it like focused on her for a minute. And I was like, we're going to come back to that? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. There's not. She was just a proper lady. Unlike everybody. Maybe, else. maybe, she, maybe she's the most wasted. She just can keep it because she, <laughs> she's a, a hardcore alcoholic drinker. That, I mean, uh, old people just, drink like fucking animals. As a side note. I did like that about this episode. There were like a, a handful of things that it did and it called attention to because it would do them more than once or it would just kind of focus on it for a minute. And I kept thinking it's going to come back to that, like the cigarette thing, how she kept on asking for a cigarette. And it just, I don't know, it seemed like the way that she was doing it and she kept doing it. But it wasn't like every time, but she'd be like, can I have one of those? I was like, are we going to come to back to something? Well, about they did her? though. When? Did they? So, so the first time she asked him for a cigarette, he's already got one lit. He gives her the one that, or like he, so it was in his mouth. He yeah. gave that to her and then gave himself another one. The second time he kind of like tossed the pack to her and like she pulled one out and lit it. The third time though, he asked her if she wanted one. She said no. So it's kind of like, oh, yeah. there was kind of that progression of, of that. So I like those little details in this episode. Yeah, they aren't no, necessarily absolutely. like big, huge things, but they're there. Right. That was neat. Yeah, it exactly. gave it an air of realism. Yeah. Not everything has a, Usually in storytelling in movies, especially shorts, everything has a meaning. That's why they wrote it. The person wrote it to like come back to it or have some type of meaning or show something. But life isn't like that. Sometimes just shit happens and there's no real meaning to it. Like we do things every day and there's no meaning to it, but it wouldn't be in a movie because everything right. in a movie or a show has meaning. So I think it's neat how sometimes just things are done. Like in this one. You want a drink? No, I do not. Focus, focus, focus move on <laughs> we coming back no nick go ahead with your well anyways well anyway <laughs> no. uh millie mckenzie quote love has its own particular point of view it sees everything larger than life nothing is too ornate too fanciful too dramatic love demands the theatrical and then transfigures it it turns the grotesque into the lovely into the lovely as a child does with it we can see what we wish to see in other people without it we can't see anything at all we can search forever and never find it. Good old Glass Cooper. Couldn't have said it yeah. better myself. I think that's the quote she says to to the Joyce Van Patten character. I just thought that was a very sweet, very beautiful. I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> um. So yeah, they get kicked out, sex parties, and a uh, couple has kids and dies lonely, lonely deaths. Uh, anything, anything else you guys want to talk about in this episode before we kind of conclude it? Like anything you wanted to bring up that hasn't been brought up yet? Mildred was, or Millie was sticky. She was sticky. sticky. I, I yeah, do I, love the quiet Millie <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> whenever she starts to ramble, he's just like, "Hey, we, 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 shh, shut up, they're getting, bitch!" They're, just, they're getting bold in this. You know, the one episode uh, with the mother and the. Was that what was the one with the the man child? The wife tells the, oh, the mother to uh, shut up. The one that we really hated. The, uh, young man's fancy. Yeah. No, 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 no. The, yeah, the one that. Been... No, no, no. It wasn't young oh. man's fancy. It was the one just recently. The one with uh, he keeps repeating his like keeps going back to his childhood and gets beat up by the young kids. 
Oh, um, Horace. Oh, Horace Horace Ford. Ford. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the I was, couldn't the even white watch tub. that episode. Like I, I told Nick I got fifteen minutes into him. Like, yeah, I can do without wasting thirty more minutes of my life on this episode. That's what I kept like, trying to tell them, but they won't listen to me. So the only, the only thing I had is Pat Hingle, and even he was weird. Even he, he was, was weird, weird as the commissioner, though, too. So I'm looking at your list to see where you put last week's because that episode hasn't came up yet. Mm. Oh, no, don't worry about me. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, uh, but uh, Jacob, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Anybody at all? See the point, Jacob. I appreciate that. I liked it. Now, where's my I beer? Point woman? out that. <laughs> Uh, we're the day. on 30. It's 30 on Thursday. We leave for home. 30. Came back and saved their relationship through the uh, power see. of sex. Yeah. And right. ships. And coming and on ships. Eileen. Sex on ships. Yep. Uh, good times had by some people and not all people. Uh, oh, one of the people in this episode was in a piano in the house, by the way. Oh my god, you people stop. It was stop. in a what? <laughs> <laughs> a piano in the house. The house? <laughs> Jacob you just had an aneurysm. He, he got run over by a mental lawnmower. He tried that, to kill him with a forklift. <laughs> the ticket guy, I think, was in that one. Oh my god. Probably. Um, yeah. Ram, I usually have some things to say. You have, you have nothing to say on the at all? No, I like I said, this is an episode that I knew the ending going in, so it was good to see the subtle hints going in and to see all the conversations. It was great to have a large cast that you could uh, have everybody's opinion and have different but the same outlook. Some people were missing spouses for 30 years. Some people were missing spouses for three months and they all agree that this was the best option. Whatever our option ends up being, which as we said is unclear, everyone has agreed that this is what we want to do and I thought that having different people with different opinions but all have the same uh, realization was a good idea. Amen to that. Amen to that. All right. With that said, I guess that'll do it. Nobody else has anything else to say. Nobody has anything else to play. Pay, way, Trey, a la mode. Um, Come on, uh, Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> I want more, 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 more. Uh, okay, so that is Passage of the Lady Ann, or Passage on the Lady Ann. Come on, on the, come on, the lady in. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, episode directed by Lamont Johnson. Once again, it was the, the last fully written, non ghost written episode by Charles Beaumont because he, once again, he wrote stories, but a lot of his stories were ghost written. So after this, so there you go. Passage on the lady in. Extra very, char on the lady in. Yeah, extra char. Um, with that said, uh, I guess we'll go into the last segment of the podcast. You gotta Why have the that? outro. Maybe the uh oh I guess, I guess we could do the outro. Oh, Nourishing. I mean, we gotta have Jacob do something every once in a while, you know? Yeah. Jacob. So. Yes. <laughs> uh I guess we can do the which one, the uh last uh <clears throat> yeah, I've got it pulled up here. Right right here in front of me. Got it. I'm prepared. Totally prepared. Totally prepared. The lady Anne never reached port. After they were picked up by a cutter a few hours later, as Captain Rothro had promised, the ransom searched the newspapers for news. But there wasn't any news. The Lady Anne, with all her crew and all her passengers, vanished without a trace. But the ransoms knew what had happened. They knew that the ship had sailed off to a better port, a place called the Twilight Zone. The passage of the pe- passage on the penis stretcher. I'm penis glad stretcher the, the ransoms end. know what happened to them because we don't fuck <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> no. no fucking clue. They got a ransom and that was it. 
They were yeah. kidnapped by Somalian pirates and were never seen from again. <laughs> and then they were saved by Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks because he went, I'm the captain now. And you know, that was it. The, yeah. the Navy SEALs came in and shot him. Oh, it's good times. That's what happened. I'm captain right. now. <laughs> Anyways, with that said, let's go into the last segment, which is the closing narration or the, I um, mean, the uh, Twilight Zone ranking list, the greatest ranking list ever known by the Eileen and her coming ons and passage of Lady Anne's and mm-hmm. all that good stuff. Ramble, ramble, ramble. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Rabble, rabble. Um, okay, where are we putting this? Uh, Where's uh, is this better than miniature? Is this better than death ship? What number is that? Uh, sixteen and thirteen. Yeah, now we're talking. Is this better? <laughs> is this better than the little people? Nothing in the dark. I don't think this is as good as nothing in the dark. No. What was nothing in the dark? The one oh, Robert, so Brad, Death Robert, came knocking on the door. Blas Cooper. Oh. Is this better than the new exhibit? I think so. I like New Exhibit. I, I, I'm not a big fan of New Exhibit. Myself, what is that one again? The wax uh, people. Figures. Yeah. I like New Exhibit, but I do think that this one was just overall better. Um, a very different story, but still better. Is it better than on thir- the last week's episode? On Thursday, or is it last week? No, uh, on Thursday, we leave for home. That That's last number week. 30. Yeah, that was last week. Oh, yeah, I think it's better than that one. I yeah, like I like, I like that episode. Uh, I like the like tale of obsession and stuff. And this is kind of the, I mean, it is kind of a tale of obsession. It's these people that can't let go of their past, kind of like the main guy in that one. I think it was better than Death Ship, wasn't that this week? I mean, this season. I don't yeah, think it was better. That was, than one Death of, Ship. That was number two or three of this season. Yeah, you don't think it was better than Death Ship? No, I like Death uh, Ship, but I think I think. I don't know. I really um, like this episode. I really like the performances. I thought they sold the shit out of it. Well, I, I do. I think they did too. But I think Death Ship is just a great Twilight Zone episode. It really works on like all the levels. Like Nick has said a couple of times, this isn't the most Twilight Zoney of Twilight Zone episodes. Yeah. Well, and I that, don't know if that hurts it on the list or not. All that being said, will the real Martian stand up? Was right after Death Ship, and I, I do think the will will the real Martian stand up is better. Definitely it's also more... a different kind of episode. When I think Twilight Zone, I liken that more than this. Sure. I enjoyed this episode, but I do... If you said, rank those two right now, I'd be like, well, will the real Martian stand up first? Same Actually, boat. while we're while we're talking, Triv, where did this rank on the... It's better than miniature. Um, <laughs> you guys are gonna... Uh, yeah. Can you, can you guess? I, I know where it is on Paste. I... Paste put it low, I bet. Pace put it at okay. Pace put it at seventy three. Oh, so around halfway. Yeah, and IMDb weirdly had it at ninety six. No, it's usually the other way around, isn't it? Then Pace usually yeah. had it lower. Yeah, yeah. Pace so, does not like season four. Well, Pace doesn't like a lot of shit. I mean, mm. um, name is Pace. So what they said about it was, hang on here, um, melodramatic. Uh, I did melodram- not think it was melodramatic. You take uh, well, they say melodramatic season four script work basically mostly because it focuses on character development instead of concept of uh, fantastical truth behind the ship appears to be crammed as an add-on into the twilight so to add twilight zone flavor otherwise it's a straight romantic drama i mean i i honestly agree with that i i mean i agree with the sentiment i don't necessarily agree with what they're saying like it being yeah, I, that it's a bad thing they're saying it's a bad thing yeah we're saying well, I don't they think said what we said, and we're saying it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to some extent, the the reviews on IMDb um kind of give it that you know it's the final cruise, lovely acting, uh, renewal and passage, wonderful ending, a major achievement. The there's one of the six six out of ten ratings is the love boat, the g- geriatric love boat. Um, but that's like a core of twilight zone people learn something and it changes them oh no and that's in their lives and that's definitely what happened here i thought right i mean i think if you wanted if you wanted to be cynical about it you could say this is way too long of an episode which a lot of you could say of the four the 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 hour-long episodes you know a lot of them could be cut down and if you wanted to be cynical and not look too deep into this i think you could probably skate over the surface and say there's no reason for it to be half an hour. 
I don't believe that, but I think that you could make that argument if you really wanted to. We you can tell the story about that happening. though, and we yeah. we oh, all no, agree, kind of agree that we agree. like. Yeah, no, you, I I agree, yeah, but I think I if think you wanted to, point. if you wanted to look at it that way, if you were looking for things to criticize about it, I think you could say that about any of these episodes. Yeah, I really. think we all agree though that it would be a worse episode without the long sentimental speeches, and that that it stuff hit. really I, helped the episode. I I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Like, I mean, we're we, we're talking about putting this above five characters in search of an exit. Furniture's Devil, The Grave, Once Upon a Time, The Silence. The I literally, sure I, I would put this above like somewhere between He's Alive and The Howling Man. I mean, it's just, I, I don't We've think that. We've looked at a lot of ones there, though. Like, that's kind of been our. Yeah, like, but Jacob always, t- don't you always talk about how five characters in Search of an Ex is like one of the episodes you think should be ranked higher? I do. Like, you, you want to, you're talking about wanting to put this above. That I, is I think it should be retired, but it's not. So five characters in search of an exit is a character-based episode like this is. So I think that's a good like starting point of conversation because yeah. there is a larger cast of important members, anyways. And it is everyone has their own thing. So it's a good it's a kind of good comparison. But it's my. I, th- I feel like five characters is more of a concept episode. It is more about yeah. they're in this cube esque, you know, room trash bin. Yes, yeah. I won't go there. You did there, <laughs> uh, but you know they're in this weird place, and you know it's 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 surreal, and there's obviously something with each of these people that's very like odd and big. And our main characters kind of feel like they're that way, though that they're in. Yeah. How did we end up on a ship with a bunch of old people when we're supposed to be on a regular cruise? And but they're so distracted by their own thing that they don't place. realize something's going on. I don't and know. If you we, wanted to really talk about it that way, you look at the trade-ins. You've kind of got that sentimentality that comes with you know something that's very character-driven, and you're kind of talking you know kind of a similar story of. Folks deciding that, okay, you know what, we can't go back to what we were. We're going to go ahead to, you know, and just live out what's left of our lives. You could look at that that way if you wanted to. Yeah, I guess it's just kind of a similar result of let's just end this sort of thing. Yeah. I just, as much as I like this episode, I just don't think it's as good as like Nothing in the Dark and The Silence. I think The Silence, especially Nothing in the Dark, tell better stories much more interesting stories I, I think i would feel more i mean we've put a lot of stuff at, down by howling man and such but i would agree i think it is definitely more a level of like that than up up with the 15 or up in the teens personally nothing in the dark has one character with that thing and we get her one opinion this does have like more nuance of more people having their opinion of why they want or don't want that to happen to them Instead oh wait, no. Just class Cooper's opinions. I get the wrong episodes mixed up. I'm thinking of Shadow Play. I I'm thinking not the Silence is the yeah. I mean this episode's better than the Silence. The Silence says Silence like, is band. a bat. Silence yeah, yeah. Is that, a I bat. got I got I got Shadow Play mixed up with the Silence. Okay, yeah. Shadow Play is the one where the guys in the jail cell over and over and over. Yeah, and uh, nothing in the dark is the Robert Redford one. I mean, you guys tell me. Well, now that you remember which episode is which, Nick, where are you at now that you're thinking uh, about? I mean, is this better than The Grave, A World of His Own? I preferred A World of His Own. It's one I would watch more so than this, but I'm not going to sit here and say in that particular area of them. Mm. Actually, no, I will say that. I would watch Printer's Devil, Nick of Time, and World of His Own before I would watch this again. And World that's of not His say... Own is a fourth wall one, right? Yeah. That one's... That was great. This was a great capper to the end of the first season. I was here for The Grave. That was the first episode I was on. It's the one I handpicked because I really liked that episode. Yeah. Well, what about this? What if we put it between, like, The Grave and Once Upon a Time or the Once Upon a Time and The Silence? Or is that too low? Which one was Once Upon a Time? That's uh, Buster Keaton. Oh, that's the Buster Keaton one. Yeah. I mean, what about you, like, Jacob? What do you think? I mean, I'm fine with it. I just... I don't want to. Like, do well, the the long. question, I, I guess, the question I have is: Are you fine putting above five characters in search of an exit, or do you want to keep five characters in search of an exit above it? 
Well, that's the thing is I don't that we run into that problem often is I do think I would rather watch five characters in search of an exit than this. But when I look at our list, if there's like five or six above that, that just happen to end up being there that I'd rather watch this mm -hmm. over that, then I'm just going to take the hit. I mean, with this one, where's five, five characters in 19? Nine. Yeah. Like, okay, it's a good life. Nightmares of a child miniature. Those three, I would rather watch this than those. I think they're all good, but I just rather watch this than those. Yeah. So I'm agree. cool with, I mean, if, if if it was right, what's this one? Which one? Trade ins and will the real Martian stand up? Or that's that's like mm, I don't know if I want to go any higher than that. Now I mean below that though, Printer's Devil that was a really good one. I don't know what because they're, they're so different. Whether I like this one more or that one, uh, I probably Nick of Time. Which one is Nick of Time? It's the one where they get caught in the diner asking the little oh, yeah, 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 the little yeah, yeah. Uh, fortune teller machine. The uh, devil uh, thing. One of the William Shatner episodes. William Shatner, yeah. yeah. The world of his own. See, those are all like kind of like, man, I don't know which one I'd pick. You know, I'd really have to think about it. It would depend on my mood. So, yeah, right in this area right here, I'm cool with because all the most of these fall in that kind of depends on my mood as to which one. I would this rep. is an actory one, kind of like the grave. Yeah. Well, so, here, here's where I would. How about your above printer's devil or below printer's devil? I'm good either way, really. Yeah, I, I like Prince's Devil better than this, but that's I I'm a big Burgess Meredith fan. Like he he does it for me. So I'm kind of just like with those. I'm like I'm indifferent to whether it's if it's right in that area. I think it's in good company. So if so, one of you feel strongly about that, I'm on board. No, so, I'm anywhere around there. Yeah, any either. Yeah, Nick, you're uh you're in charge. Twenty or twenty one. I hold that kind of pressure, damn it. You're gonna have <laughs> uh, to deal with it. I, I will put it below Printer's Devil. Just kind of, I think that works. The number 21. Does that sound good? Yeah. You know yeah. what else is below? Your mom. Her chance to dream. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is now number 39. We're almost at 40. And, oh my God, she gave us the O face again. Um, number 100, of course, is uh, now long live Walter Jameson, true. <sighs> now number 100. Uh, anyways, so there. Number 97. No, we're not going there just yet. A piano um, in the house. <laughs> uh, Nick's never gonna <laughs> let me on this show again. Oh, I figured you guys would do it after I did everything else. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, up I on you. cut it ahead. <laughs> He's still going <laughs> because he must. The he funny must. thing, people, people are like, because I have to edit it. People in the the audio feed will be like, "Why is there so much dead air? What is going on?" <laughs> Dinner. If you uh, listen to the podcast version of this program, there was a dance break by Mr. <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> um, but with that said, new number 21 is Passage on the Lady Anne. Uh, good place for that. Number one, Eye of the Beholder. Number 119 is The Trouble with Templeton. Next week is the season finale of season four, the last hour long episode of the series. Then we go back to 30 minute episodes and me actually being able to wake up less than an hour before we have to record to watch an episode. <laughs> it's a uh, season four episode 18 called the bard uh, Alex's favorite episode. Um, it's an episode that is directed by David Butler written by Ron Sterling. Um, it actually has a, a pretty good cast. Jack Weston, John Williams, Henry Laskell, John McGiver, Howard McNear. And of course, Burt Reynolds is in the episode. And it's still going to be number 119. <laughs> you know what? Jess Bell survived that. The incredible world of Horace Ford survived that. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. We'll look forward to that. Alex should be on for that episode. So, you know, to conclude out the re the, the, the podcast. But uh, for now, we're going to we're going to head out. Raymond, as always, awesome to have you on. Wish we could have you on more. Would you uh you claim that you don't like to be in the twilight zone very often? We live on the scary in here. Uh, <laughs> we live on the orgy of Bob Giacconi in the you know edited cut of a uh, fastest way the end. Um, in all serious though, thank you for coming on again. It's been awesome. We'll get you back on yeah. in the fifth season at some point, probably for the witching pool or some nonsense <laughs> like that. Uh, black leather jackets, but uh, oh god, the, the no. I'm not doing that. I'm busy that day. <laughs> <laughs>
but anyways, you have content, you have a channel, you post uh crazy, obscure, but awesome videos. Where is that located? Uh R-A-Y-H-S on YouTube. Uh I recently reviewed a Molly Ringwald arm wrestling movie. What? So nice. that's a thing. It was recorded in 1982 and it sucks. So they didn't record it into, didn't release it till 87 when she was famous. Yay. <laughs> What's this movie called? Uh, PK and the Kid. She is PK. The kid is a arm wrestler played by Paul Lamatt. It's I like weird. I feel like I've heard of that. I have yeah. no. It has the exact same plot as uh, Over the Top, despite the. Pl- Fact it love was over the top written five years earlier don't know how it's oh and instead of uh peter loja rich grandfather trying to kidnap the kid it's a child molester played by alex rocco so oh, like you do yeah so that's a movie <laughs> alex rocco almost comically trying to molest molly ringwald for an hour and a half so that's a movie. Yeah, that sounds oh. exciting. Should, yeah, we should next, all watch Alex Rocco be a molester. Yeah, and the next thing I'm reviewing is uh, Michael Landon's uh, Highway to Heaven TV series. So it's a variety of nonsense over there. I'm Let's have the fun of it. Highway to heaven. <laughs> I'm on a highway to heaven. So yeah, gotta watch, gotta watch Highway to Hell though. Also, yeah. exactly. Or watch it have the uh, song Highway to Overdrive because I couldn't afford it. But it's a great movie. Next, you gotta watch Maximum Overdrive and then complete the no. trilogy of highways. Next, he's um, watching Remo Williams. The adventure begins. Yeah, yeah it's ready. It's on my TV. It's right there. Yes. Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> he's been itching it for like the last two hours. I want to watch that second <laughs> movie in existence where he walks away slow from an explosion in the end. Ooh, I'm better. It's all it. terrible. All right, Jacob. You hey. have content. The I content's do. good. You post videos I so do. often. Your videos yeah. do well. You, your channel does well. And uh, yeah, right. where's that located? Retro JKXY on YouTube. I make old video game content. Retro content. It's in the name. Um, had a video come out a couple or a few weeks now ago about the PlayStation 3. Go check that out. Took a lot of work on that. I have another video. It's already uploaded, done, ready. But I've scheduled it for, let's see. Well, actually, by the time this comes out, it would have already premiered on Sunday. So go watch that. It just came out the other day. So go watch that. It's about the Sega CD. And Sega my CD. So the old. But shit. Jake, I thought you don't. I thought you didn't know anything about video games. I thought you had to do research. I don't know shit about video games. And actually, this <laughs> is one of those videos that I was told to stop babbling on and rambling. It's. But that. you're so good at babbling on and rambling. But, oh yeah, I do it for two hours. There you go. <laughs> I talk somehow I talk longer about less games <laughs> than awesome. the last video. <laughs> you talk you longer have... about if you talk for two hours, you talk longer about Sega CD than it was in production. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jacob, all I can say is Ring the Sun. Triv, content. Yep. You. Uh, no. Excellent. Negative. No. <laughs> More videos than us. Ooga booga. Yeah. Where's that at? Uh, for the content I do, you can see me here on YouTube, uh, Trivial Theater. I just did um a film Ooh. fest review about a little independent um family friendly zombie movie called Don't Get Eaten. Um, got another one upcoming from that film festival. It's called Lena, Lena and Vladimir. It's a North Macedonian movie that is incredibly good. Um, so check out my review. Keep an eye open for that movie because it was fantastic. Um. After that, I'm doing a thing for um, in honor of uh, Corman. And from after that, I'm not sure. So playing it by ear. Yes. Rest in peace, Roger Corman, the master yeah. of the B-level movies, E-grade movies. So definitely check those contents out. They are fantastical. They are great. You need to come on their channels all over the place. Spooge. Um, anyways. <laughs> I don't know. Spooging in. Uh, the house? The house? <laughs> hey, you got Nick to do it. There you go. Yay, we will win Just you because over there's no pianos time. in the spooge. Um, <laughs> oh, yuck. Anyways. Um, oh, God, no. Um, 
my content, of course, is at Movie Emporium, where this video of the podcast is The Fifth Dimension is held. Uh, once again, I'm doing uh, Dark Matter, Apple TV Plus original series. Really good. If you read the book, you you kind of know where it's headed. But episode four should be posted by the time this episode airs. Uh, some good stuff. Really good episodes. I, I'm trying with my movie reviews, but it's, like I said, it's it's been difficult with my work and stuff like that. So you get what you get. You better like it. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> like it. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, that'll that'll do it. That's it. That's our take on passage on the Lady Anne, and uh, we're gonna head out. We're gonna go back into the Twilight Zone, and for myself, Triv, Jacob, and Raymond, we'll see you guys next time in the Twilight Zone. Peace out, motherfucker. Ow, I hurt my pinky. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go no, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, I okay. want to give you guys a, a great Garfield movie review. Listen to this. Delightful and charming. Filled to the brim with satire fun. Chris Pratt truly honors the legacy. You'll roar with laughter and have a post time. time. Not just another cartoon. Garfield. It's the best Garfield movie ever. A fitting end setting. Fitting end setting up what's next. You know what? The 80s Garfield cartoon was was fitting and whatever else. True, true, true. true. It but, might be good. Guys, you got all you guys. It's not it out yet, is it? No. Once again, I'll reread, I'll reread it to you. Oh, Review. Delightful and charming, filled to the brim with satire fun. Chris Pratt truly honors the legacy. You'll roar with a laughter and have a postponing good time. Not just another cartoon. It's the best Garfield movie ever. A fitting end setting up what's next. Oh, we're ignoring we're ignoring your sexicon, uh, Nick. I didn't write the review. I'm on. just you guys didn't get you guys did you guys get the joke? I mean I, I, the, Yeah, they they go nobody yeah, way over. Yeah, I heard about puss pounding okay. and just blacked out. Thank you. That. You'll roar laughter and have a puss pounding good time. Oh, I said we're ignoring your sexicon. <laughs> I, I don't think the other two got it. A puss no, I missed that. Time. And then the the tweeter writes, "I'm sorry, I'll have a what." <laughs> <laughs>